Fighting games mimic real fighting a lot closer than you would think. It may sound ridiculous with people blowing up planets and shooting fireballs out of their hands, but there are things that are intrinsically tied to the art of combat that can never be lost no matter what package is in. With that being said, in most games, the beginner experience is some form of running in, getting a few hits or licks in, and then going in to continue that pressure or combo and seemingly getting grabbed or attacked out of it. In the moment, they either lose or adapt by conditioning themselves to stay away and back off when they get that situation. If you've adapted to your opponent and are no longer taking damage and is now able to compete, then what's the problem? Like, why is this an issue? This is the equivalent of running away from someone in the fetal position. In real life, you would never let your opponent get up for free, let alone be afraid of them. And if you're doing this against people around the same skill level, you're basically giving away an advantage and proceeding to lose the match. Acting while your opponent is down or unable to move is a fundamental aspect of fighting in general and can be seen in MMA as people pounce on each other after a knockout or a stagger. So what's going on here? Is the fighting in video games somehow different where it just doesn't apply? This happens to people because they don't fully understand what changes going from real life to video games. And once you know how it works, you can apply it to any fighting game that involves hitting another player because it follows the same principles. Knockdown situations are important to recognize as key decision points as you're making decisions based off of empathy. Basically, your ability to sense how your opponent feels. With that in mind, let's take a look at the situation again. You knock your opponent down, you run towards them, and you sense that they're gonna grab, so you jump. You think they're gonna do a low attack, so you do an attack that's gonna beat the low attack. Maybe you sense that your opponent is mashing on wake up, so you pick an option to beat that. Everything that I'm doing here is done in respect to what the other player's potential actions are, which is a skill that will follow you from game to game. The difficult part about this isn't necessarily the mechanical ability to pull off these options, but having the knowledge of what option beats what, and the dexterity to be able to quickly read the emotions of your opponent. Now, let's take a look at some of the options that you'll see in every fighting game you'll play. First, let's take a look at meaties. In its simplest form, fighting games is just trying to put your red box on your opponent's green or blue box. And when that red box collides with that green box, it results in a hit. With these moves associated with boxes, there are three stages to each of them. The startup, the active frames, and then the recovery frames of it. The startup part of the move is the beginning part of the animation where it doesn't have a red box yet. The active frames of it is the amount of time in which the red box is out and active in can make contact with the opponent. And the recovery frames is the recoil or the recovery animation after doing the move in which the red box is no longer out. This is true for almost every single move in a fighting game. Regardless of how fast it is, you can get popped during the startup of that move. The reason why I talk about these moves in respect to the hitbox is because it can look like a move should be making contact, but if the hitboxes aren't there, then they're not going to make contact. And this is why you can have a move that seemingly goes through the body of your opponent as they're getting up, because their hitbox isn't there yet. They're still in the get up animation where you can't touch them. So there's no box for you to make contact with. And while you're recovering, their box can be there, but you don't have a box to make contact with, even though your arm is going through their body. With all of this in mind, all a meaty is, is the process in putting a red box or red active frame period on top of your opponent as they're getting up. Because there's a red box on top of their body as they're getting up, if they do anything such as throwing, attacking, or even trying to jump, they're going to get hit because all of those options have startup frames. Meaties can be risky though, depending on what move you're using as a meaty because if you mistime the media, you're left wide open after as you're beside your opponent during the recovery frames of your move. But all meaties aren't created equal. While any move theoretically can be used for a meaty because all moves have active frames, there are some moves that are better at this than others. An example of this would be Ryu's jab. Ryu's standing punch can be used as a meaty, but it's not a good meaty option to go for because the active frames are only out for a short amount of time. So while the move is fast, the active frames are only out for such a short amount of time that it's really hard to time having that hitbox on top of them as they get up. So what makes a great meaty is the opposite. It's a move that has more and longer active frames. The more active frames a move has, the easier it is to time having that red box on the opponent as they get up. 
The reason why the definition of medes is just simply putting the red bots on top of the green bots or the rising opponent because it doesn't have to be a punch, it doesn't have to be a kick. These are fighting games with fantastical moves that are slightly different and have all kinds of properties, right? But you can be creative and do all kinds of things. It's just the principle is the same. So in Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm, you can use uh, Sasuke's Chidori as a meaty because Sasuke is running with the Chidori as an active frame. He's a moving hitbox. And in Dragon Ball Fighters, beams are great uses of meaties as they are full screen red bosses that can be placed on their opponent to continue pressure and combos. To practice meaties in whatever game you're playing, you set your training dummy to either jump or mash or throw on wake up. And then you come up to them and you use the meaty attack of your choice. If your opponent is able to jump out of your pressure, that means you mistimed your meaty. You may be watching this wondering, why do you need meaties? Why is this so important? Meaties are essential because they set up basic offense. Now, if your opponent is blocking and expecting your meaty, that leaves them open to a grab now. So the fundamental offense to set up in any fighting game is to first set up your meaty, show that, and once your opponent starts blocking it, now you can start going for grabs instead. And this switch up is simple. You basically do the same as that setup that you would do for your meaty, but instead of pressing the meaty attack, you just go for a grab instead. It's important to note that in most games, if you haven't conditioned your opponent to block that meaty and they're still mashing or doing something else, they're probably gonna beat your grab. So someone can mash out of your grab or jump out of your grab. So this is why it's important to make sure that you condition them to block your meaties first before you switch it up. If your opponent doesn't ever like switch to blocking your meaties, then you have no reason to stop doing it. Just meaty them to death. The next option I'm gonna talk about is the scrub killer, jumping. Jumping is considered a scrub killer for three main reasons. First reason says throw and vulnerable. In most fighting games, jumping is considered the option that beats throwing. So if you stand right next to someone and jump during the active frames of a throw, you'll go right through it and then you'll be able to land on them and punish them for that whip. The second reason why jumping is a scrub killer is because it beats button mashing. Mashing any attack button on wake up is prone to leave you wide open as you're not able to hit your opponent because they're in the air and then they just land on you with the move. The third reason why jumping is a scrub killer is because it provides a three-way mix-up that your opponent has to block. When you're in the air, you have the option of going for an overhead that must be blocked high, or landing and going low, which must be blocked low, or landing and going for a grab, which has to be teched. Your opponent has to go through all three of these options if they let you get into the air. The crazy part about this is, it's really simple to do mechanically, but it's so effective. To do this, all you have to do is knock down your opponent, will hold forward to slowly walk towards your opponent or run towards them depending on the game, and then just press directly up on the D-pad or analog stick, which is going to make you jump straight up with the neutral jump. See, this is all fine and dandy, right? It's like, oh, this is awesome. But if you're on defense, you're watching this like, what? The thing is, the person on defense can make decisions too. You see, in real life, people can still attack you while they're on the ground. They can kick you in the face and do all kinds of stuff to you. Here we have Chip doing a perfectly timed meaty, yet it's not working, he's getting blown up out of it. Because meaties and knockdown situations are such a fundamental aspect of fighting games, game developers design moves just for these situations to get out of them. These moves are called invincible reversals. They're called that because they're invincible on startup. So during the startup animation of these moves, the opponent can't be hit. A common type of invincible reversals are dragon punches, which are these dragon uppercut moves that can look very similar from game to game, but they're not limited to just these moves. This is designed this way so that when an experienced player is picking up a new game and they see a reversal, they know it when they see it. And they balance this by making the input difficult to do or time, in addition to leaving them wide open after with huge recovery frames to be able to punish them. This is where we lose most people. If the move is invincible on startup and they can just do it, it's hard to communicate with the gorilla. Why would I continue to try this? I just might as well go back to running away, right? You can beat it, but now it's time to be a fighting game player. You have to run up to your opponent and empathize and identify that they're gonna do the dragon punch. And what you do, you back up. At the last second, you back up and you call it out. This is hard for a lot of people because it takes exercising that empathy and thinking about what my opponent is gonna do, something that most people don't do when they first get into fighting games. A lot of times new players think that they need better combos to start winning, when in actuality, they need to be able to recognize when their opponent's done three dragon punches in a row. Because their opponent was wide open afterward because of the large recovery frames and they did nothing about it. 
in addition to losing their ability to run their offense. So at this point, isn't fighting games just advanced rock, paper, scissors? Yeah, but not really. Because when you think about it, fighting games are really based off of the person. If you're fighting an individual, right, that can recognize you're doing dragon punches, but they can't do a damaging combo to make you want to stop doing it, but you have no reason or incentive to stop doing it because they can't punish you for it. So yes, it's rock, paper, scissors, but it's advanced rock, paper, scissors because it's based off of your opponent's ability. Also, landing the reversal window is pretty hard in these games, so if you're going up against a person that can't purposely time their reversal for their dragon punches, then you can meet them all day even though you both know that the reversal is supposed to beat it. As an extra tip, as the person on defense, a lot of these games have a ridiculous amount of defensive mechanics with various names and whatnot, and it can be hard to figure out when to use them in the first place. This is where you experiment with your blitz shields, your yellow roman cancels, your, your rejects, your uh, counter, parry, sparks, whatever they're called. This is where you experiment with whatever that game has to offer because this is how you get out of these situations, and this is what it was built in there for. Also, I want to emphasize that yes, dragon punches are the most common invincible reversals, but they're not the only ones. So another example is rolling up in Naruto. After a knockdown, you roll up and you do your ultimate jutsu off rip. Those ultimate jutsus normally are invincible on startup if you can get the timing for it. The next thing we're going to talk about is flow. Going from one sequence in a combo that ends and going into the next and using all of these scenes and switching between your options. What else is that? <laughs> In an actual match, you will want it to go like this, get a combo, knock down, meaty. Knock down, run up, grab. They were expecting meaty because of the last time. Here we got a similar situation, different game. We get a knockdown from a counter. We come up, we put a meaty on his head, go into a grab. Get another knockdown. I know it is. Go into a meaty, go into another grab. Go into another knockdown. This time I try to do a meaty. I was a little late, I was indecisive. Get another knockdown. Run up, another meaty, projectile meaty, go into a grab. Here's another game. We have a knockdown situation. I think he's gonna go for low, so we'll go for a low crush move. Starts another combo. Another knockdown, we wait for it. Low crush, jump, low crush. So I showed him that was happening, he went for it anyways on autopilot. I know he's not gonna do it a third time, so I tried to read the roll, but I missed it. Okay, throw the control two times. It'll be LB, RB, R. To be continued? What am I supposed to do? So when I get to the end of the combo, they're gonna tell me the rest? How, how can anybody do that? So you tell me there's a part two to the combo. I mean, yeah, it's hard out here. You gotta be looking for that next lick as soon as you finish your combo. You gotta be thinking about where that next hit or lick is gonna come from. The last thing we're gonna talk about is the learning curve. Recent games have been following a trend of trying to make them more accessible. The way that some games have been trying to do this is by tackling this entire knockdown situation. So in Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, they don't have hard knockdowns. Every knockdown is a soft knockdown, which your opponent pops right back up. This is the equivalent of a ref stepping in during a boxing match after your opponent is knocked down. But in boxing, you still get the benefit of potentially winning the round and scoring on cards because of the knockdown. While it may seem difficult at first because it's not the same speed as other games, you can still meet in this game as well. It just takes a little innovation. Maybe like holding something down or charging something or looking for another way. The point of this is, going into a new game, it may look like these simple concepts may not translate, but good players are always going to find a way to make it translate. They're going to find a way to meet you. They're going to find a way to you know, implement these same strategies. While they may not look the exact same, they're still going to be there at its core. Developers can't protect you, man. This is the art of combat. This is what people are labbing. This is what people are trying to figure out when they're in the lab and you're looking for Twitter and YouTube tech. This is what pe the situations people are looking for. In games that don't allow you to get hard knockdowns, there are two things you can look for. First, in resets. Resets are basically ending a combo prematurely to then make an ambiguous situation that allows you to get another combo. This focuses on blurring the line between the beginning of one combo and the end of another. The second thing that I would experiment with is setting some kind of trap. 
So characters like Venom and like uh, Tool Bombs and Naruto are great ways of just setting up stuff ahead of time while your opponent is recovering from a move. While it may not necessarily be a full knockdown, you could just cancel into something that's going to set you up for the future. One thing to remember in all of this is that timing is paramount in these situations, in these interactions. The difference between you and experienced players that tend to be at the top of every game that they play is that they're quickly able to deduce if they did a good option in a bad situation with bad timing or did a bad option and just happened to do it at a timing that worked out. An example of this will be trying to bait Ken's Dragon Punch with the back dash. A new player mashing everything and accidentally getting a bad dash and it not working may lead that player to believing that this is an option that doesn't work against it while an experienced player would look at the situation and just know that they didn't time it properly. No, experienced players don't know right away all the time, but what they will do is that within the same match, they will try the same option again, and then it will verify their assumption. To sum everything up, you are always making decisions. So one thing you should ask yourself is that, is this person really nice and really hit me with this long combo? Or was there a point in time where I could have made a decision and I didn't recognize it? Also, never let your opponent get up without making the decision themselves, as that's a free opportunity to force yourself on them. And learn the best method for you to continue your offense after a combo. As long as you do these things, you'll be better at any fighting game you pick up going forward in the future. If you guys enjoyed the video or learned anything, please leave a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And it made me want to continue making content like this. For now, peace out.